Good day. Welcome, friends, family, supporters, volunteers, and activists. Today, in the context of Jewish Heritage Month, amidst the litany of amazing contributions by Jewish Canadians to life in Canada and around the world in culture, science, arts, medicine, and many other fields, and in the midst of celebrating the 74-year miracle of a rebuilt Israel this month, we are here to honor and celebrate a great organization and an amazing and courageous, innovative and outstanding leader, Brooke Goldstein. I'm Andrea Spindle, Executive Director of the Canadian Anti-Semitism Education Foundation, a national charitable organization with a proud 18 year history. We educate Jews and non-Jews about Jewish history, Zionism and Israel's right to the land, as well as debunking lies upon lies by our enemies. Through webinars, bulletins, advocacy, and direct action, we are also part of the End Jew Hatred Movement initiated by Brooke Goldstein and her team. In 2020, despite the pandemic, CAF inaugurated the Advocate Award of Excellence to recognize the 100th anniversary of the San Remo Declaration that laid the groundwork at a global level for reconstituting the Jewish homeland in the mandate for Palestine. We presented, sorry, contributing to the ongoing battle to confirm for the world that Jerusalem belongs to the Jews as do Judea and Samaria. CAF bestowed the first such award on Dr. Jacques Gauthier an esteemed legal expert whose work is breathtaking in scope and scholarship. Today, Dr. Godier will pass this honor to an indomitable Canadian colleague and her team. We want to thank the many organizations that extended their support and sponsorship for today's program. All organizations that share our love of Israel and our fight against anti-Zionism Thanks to the following, Americans for Peace and Tolerance, the Institute for Black Solidarity with Israel, the Atlanta Coalition for Israel, Muslims Facing Tomorrow, the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem, Adith Israel Synagogue, World Chirut and Chirut North America, Hasbara Fellowships Canada, the Israel Activist Calendar, Club Z, Canadian Institute for Jewish Research, Canadians for Israel's Legal Rights, UK Lawyers for Israel, Canadians for the Rule of Law, Liberate Art, <clears throat> Combat Antisemitism Movement, Americans for a Safe Israel, the United Jewish Appeal of Greater Toronto, Doctors Against Racism and Antisemitism, the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs, and the Holocaust Museum and Center for Tolerance and Education. Thank you, friends and colleagues. You are in for a special, wonderful set of treats now and an event of learning and celebrating. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our MC for the rest of this virtual program, the estimable Barbara Kay. Barbara is a newspaper columnist with courage and conviction, challenging the woke, demanding honest reporting, pressing on the nerves of anti-Semites and calling on all of us to wake up to what the lies about Israel and the protests are doing to our society. On behalf of all of you, I extend a warm welcome to Barbara Kay. Thank you, Andrea. Good afternoon, friends. I am proud and pleased to be here with you, with fellow Zionists, with Canadian, American, European, Israeli friends and others who have joined from various points around the globe. Please stay with us for the full 90 minute program. We invite you to post your thoughts and congratulations in the chat window. As we have a full and wonderful program to share with you, we may not have time for questions at the end, but please submit any you have to the Q&A window. And if we run out of time, we will make sure to pass them on. This webinar is being recorded, so you may enjoy it again and share it with friends who weren't available today. If you have comments, questions, or wish to donate to support the work of CAEF, please go to the CAEF website at www.caef.ca. Ms. 
Edith Shamir, Israel's Consul General for Toronto and Western Canada, would have been pleased to join us, but was unavoidably called away. She has sent a letter. Dear friends, it gives me great pleasure to extend greetings and warm wishes on behalf of the Consulate General of Israel in Toronto and Western Canada to the Canadian Anti-Semitism Education Foundation and to everyone in today's program, honoring Brooke Goldstein with the Advocate Award of Excellence. Since 2019, the Canadian Anti-Semitism Education Foundation has provided Canadians with programs on an array of topics which concern the Jewish community and beyond. The educational lectures, panel discussions, seminars and conferences have served as platforms to gather members of the Jewish community and allies to stay educated and informed on the dangers of anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. I congratulate Brooke Goldstein, the founder and ex executive director of the Lawfare Project for receiving this recognition today. Your efforts have been a game changer in upholding the civil and human rights of the Jewish people and pro-Israel community worldwide. I wish you all the best in your impactful work and the success of this legal think tank. Sincerely, Edith Shamir, Consul General. While only in Toronto since August 2021, Consul General Shamir has reached out to our community with warmth and passion. We are very happy uh, to receive this letter from her and look forward to future events in which she will be able to join us. Now, I have the pleasure of introducing Rabbi Adam Cutler, Senior Rabbi at Toronto's Adath Israel Synagogue, where Brooke and her family are members. Rabbi Adam, like Brooke, is a Torontonian. Rabbi Cutler. On behalf of Brooke's friends here at Adath Israel Congregation in Toronto and the rabbinic community who supports the work and the woman being honored today, it is my pleasure to offer greetings. One need only look at the long list of cases handled by the Lawfare Project to understand the ongoing threats to equality for the Jewish people and the magnificent efforts by Brooke Goldstein to safeguard our right to live as free and equal citizens in our home countries and to ensure that the many pernicious attacks against Israel are adjudicated without violence through the courts. Mazal tov on this well-deserved honor. Chazak ve'ematz. Many thanks for your warm greeting and important message, Rabbi. Probably not everyone watching today has a good grasp of the story behind the Lawfare Project, a unique legal organization that is an NGO with charitable status that specializes in fighting anti-Semitism using the law. Establishing the company was the brainchild of our honoree, Brooke Goldstein, who is founder and executive director, and has an amazing, she has an amazingly talented team of lawyers, support staff, and board of directors. This initiative has, has garnered much praise and also excellent results. So to introduce you to the firm, I am pleased to call upon its chief operating officer and director of research, Ben Ryberg. Ben will provide a short overview and case examples of their work and then Gerard Felitti, senior counsel at the Lawfare Project, will tell us about the second brilliant innovation of the firm headed by Brooke, the establishment of the grassroots Jewish civil liberties movement and Jew hatred. You will soon understand why the company and its leader are being honored today. Over to you, Ben. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, so as, uh, as was just said, my name is Ben Ryberg. I'm an attorney and serve as COO and Director of Research at the Lawfare Project. I would also like to thank Andrea and CAEF for hosting today's event and uh, for selecting the Lawfare Project for its Advocate Award of Excellence. Uh, this is truly an honor and it has been such a privilege to work with CAEF in furtherance of our shared goal of ending Jew hatred. I've been with the Lawfare Project since fall of 2010, just months after its formation and mere weeks after taking the New York bar exam. Looking back over these 12 years, and while I may be a bit biased, I can't help but be awed how far the Lawfare Project has come and what it has been able to achieve, thanks to Brooks' groundbreaking vision and leadership, the tireless work and brilliant legal minds of my colleagues, the more than 500 private practice attorneys in our network who donate their legal services to our cases, 
our incredibly dedicated and generous supporters, and the collaborative efforts of our partner organizations like CAEF, among many others. The Lawfare Project's mission is to enforce and protect the civil and human rights of the Jewish people worldwide via strategic legal action. Our goal is to achieve justice for the Jewish community while punishing and deterring acts of anti-Semitic discrimination, violence, and all forms of Jew hatred. Over the past seven years, the Lawfare Project has pursued more than 120 impactful legal actions across the globe, providing tens of thousands of hours and millions of dollars worth of free legal services to the individuals and communities we serve. Our clients range from university students and professors who are marginalized and excluded from campus life merely because they are proud of their Jewish heritage to victims of brutal anti-Semitic hate crimes to high level Jewish professionals in the fields of medicine and diplomacy, experiencing pernicious harassment and retaliation in the workplace to Israeli companies targeted with bigoted forms of commercial discrimination. The Lawfare Project's actions have caused tech giants Zoom, Google, and Twitter to block terrorists from using their platforms and have obligated the California State University system to officially recognize Zionism as a core component of the ethnic and religious identity of many Jews, thereby prohibiting anti-Semitic discrimination masquerading as so-called anti-Zionism. Our efforts to confront Kuwait Airways' policy of refusing to fly Israeli passport holders resulted in the termination of all of the airline's inter-European flight routes and its popular NYC to London route, and those routes remain terminated to this day. Our lawsuit against the National Lawyers Guild, a leading proponent of BDS, forced the Guild to nullify its anti-Israeli boycott policy. And less than two weeks ago, after a lengthy battle in the Canadian federal courts, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency ruled that our client, Sagot Winery, did not have to remove the Product of Israel label from its wines. To conclude, the most effective way to combat, defeat, and deter Jew hatred is through the legal system, and the most effective way to advance our civil rights as a minority community is through impact litigation. This is why the Lawfare Project exists. Thank you very much. And now uh, we'll hear from Gerard. Thank you very much, Barbara. And thank you, Avia, for this amazing, amazing presentation. We are also deeply honored to be here and humbled to be in the presence of such great, great people who all are joined in the cause of fighting for the Jewish community. When I started at the Lawfare Project, I came on board a legal organization. But since then, we've done so much more. Thanks to Brooks' leadership and vision, we've had a, a role in founding uh, End Jew Hatred, a global grassroots civil rights movement working to eliminate Jew hatred through peaceful, direct action and education, advancing and advocating for social justice for the Jewish people. We have watched as the Black Lives Matter and Me Too movements have gained results for racial justice and gender equality. These minority right movements have altered public discourse and helped change policies and culture. We are working to achieve the same results for the Jewish community. And Jew hatred seeks to empower Jews with positivity and strength to discover and enjoy our heritage in whichever manner we choose without fear of attack or persecution, discrimination or violence. Jews have been at the forefront of every social justice and civil rights movement marching side by side with the African-American community, supporting the women's movements, the LGBTQIA plus community, every religious, ethnic, or national group struggling for equal rights and for their voice to be heard, advocating for social, economic, and political causes of every kind. Yet there has never been a Jewish civil rights movement, a movement focused solely on assuring that the civil and human rights of the Jewish people are protected by laws, and our inclusion in society is backed by societal consequences for those who dare to violate our rights. We have stood up for so many other people and causes, but now is the time to also stand up for ourselves, empower ourselves, and demand a world in which Jew hatred is unacceptable and faces stiff legal and social consequences. This is the vision behind end Jew hatred, a, a civil rights minority movement advocating for social justice. And 
as we have seen, we have in, in less than two years since we came into being, we have been able to partner with over 59 different organizations as a true movement, bringing together people for a simple cause, the cause of ending Jew hatred. We've had dozens of actions rallying people to protest everything from discrimination against Jewish students at USC to discrimination in the education system, discrimination and, and violence that's being heralded across the US and other issues. We've lobbied successfully in the public opinion against social media companies that perpetuate Jew hatred. We've had successes working in tandem with legal strategies to take down terrorist content on Zoom and to prevent terrorists from incul inculcating violence to students in the United States. There's so many successes that we've had, but all of these came from one vision and a vision that's very much shared by Brooke Goldstein. And she has been tremendous in putting this vision forward to so many other people. We're deeply appreciative of the opportunity to work with her and to work with all of you in this movement. And we thank Canada, excuse me, for being at the forefront of the end you hated movement worldwide. And we are so impressed by everything that you have done up there. And we hope that more people will emulate what you have done for this movement, which is truly a movement for us all. Thank you. Thank you, Ben and Gerard. Your dedication to the work shines through, and we know you are leaders whom we can look to for guidance, both legally and morally, in our pursuit of justice for Jews. Thanks for what you do every day within the Lawfare Project, and for your contributions, both directly and indirectly, to end Jew hatred. Quite a number of people wanted to speak and express their personal tributes to Brooke and her team to acknowledge how the work of the Lawfare Project and NGO Hatred has impacted their own work and personal lives. So we have garnered several messages, tributes, stories, and anecdotes for today's event and arranged them in different sections of the program. All are important, personal, and illustrative of the high regard that people have for the Lawfare Project and Brooke Goldstein. You will now hear from Malcolm Hunlein, Vice Chair of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations. Malcolm has amassed an impressive history of activism in the Jewish world for over 50 years, and we are honored to have him address us now. Malcolm Hunlein. I am pleased to be able to bring greetings as the Canadian Antisemitism Education Foundation honors the Lawfare Projects and presents its award for excellence in advocacy to Brooke Goldstein and her colleagues at the Lawfare Project. Their work was never more important. As we see the challenge of anti-Semitism growing globally and at home, the work of all of these organizations, the CAEF, the Lawfare Project, and our colleagues in every realm to stand against these forces of evil who spread lies, distortions, misrepresentations, slander, seek to intimidate us and all of our friends. This is true in virtually every sector of our society, from entertainment to justice to education, certainly in every realm of politics, but most importantly on the campus. This is the battleground for the hearts and minds of the next generation. And we need to assure students that they are not alone. We need to assure communities that they are not on their own. We have to show the victims that they will be defended. It's time for all of us to work together to see to it that this challenge is met. This is what never again means, that we will never leave a Jew alone, that we will never succumb, we will never be intimidated, no matter the incitement or the charges and the false libels that they bring against us. The staff of the Lawfare Projects work so hard, alone and together with the volunteer lawyers, bringing cases, standing up for truth, under the guidance of Brooke Goldstein, who not only in terms of being in charge of the internal operations, but also her media appearances, where she advocates so effectively for the cause. We are grateful to them, and we pray that the CEF and Lawfare Project and all of those engaged in the battle against Jew hatred will see their efforts blessed with success. We need you more than ever. We bless you. We thank you for what you're doing for this generation and for generations to come. Thank you, Malcolm, for today and for all your years of service. From one coast to another, we have tributes for our honorees. It's my pleasure now to introduce Masha Merkulova, 
founder and executive director of Club Z, a US-based Zionist education movement for teens and a partner organization in End Jew Hatred. Masha joins us from Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Um, from Silicon Valley, one correction. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. That's, that's all good. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Andrea, uh, for allowing me to be a panelist on this um, very great occasion. Um, dear Brooke, you are a Renaissance woman of our time when it comes to justice. I remember the first time I came across you. Uh, you were on national TV hosting host Feed to the Fire about how biased, inaccurate, and just wrong their portrayal of Israel was. And then you proceeded to calmly, but very passionately make just this breathtaking case of the background and context of what the viewer just saw. And I remember I was thinking, you know, when I grow up, I want to be you. <laughs> For our Club Z annual conference one year, you were the most popular speaker. We surveyed the students at the end, and you were number one. The funny thing was that you actually were never there. <laughs> you were Skyped in because you were about to have your baby number two. And yet through the screen and through the distance, your passion, your determination, and this unapologetic morality and principles, it, it all came through very loud and clear. It is something that our youth crave. They, they crave leaders who know who they are. And you're definitely one of that leaders. Um, I think that Miriam Webster need to update their definition of trailblazer, because I think your name needs to be there. You made a film, a documentary, Making of a Martyr. The film that you produced at the ripe age, I don't know, how old were you? 24, 25, 26, very, very mature age, um, still is as relevant today as when you produced it in 2006. And if I had any power, I'd, it'd be required viewing for every single American, period. Not just American Jew, every single American needs to see that film. And I strongly encourage the audience, find that film, see it for yourselves, show it to your children. You also understood the power of law, the power of holding people accountable, not just in the public opinion courtroom, but in an actual courtroom. And that was revolutionary. The Lawfare Project is showing us how to, how to hold people accountable truly. You represented me in a lawsuit against San Francisco State University. And despite all odds, we actually won. San Francisco State, has been ordered to rein in their Jew-hating faculty and to create new position that they have to pay for to ensure that Jewish students are not discriminated against. Lawfare Project is on this, and it, it's, your numbers are on our speed dial when it comes to our students who are facing anti-Semitic attacks on their college campuses. My own son and many of our students have received legal help from you and from your amazing team. When you see a problem, you don't spend a lot of time lamenting about it. I don't think it's you. Uh, you just, you, you try to really think out of the box. So when you saw that Zionists were not allowed at the women's spaces, the Chicago slut walk, you created Zioness and you showed up and forced to make sure that Jews will not be shunned or excluded. That is brilliant. You go towards the fire. And now you are the force behind the incredible movement to end Jew hatred. And despite the fact that Jews could never agree on literally anything, you have managed to get the Jewish community to adopt this language, to be strong and to demand justice. I wish we could clone you. 
But short of that, I am grateful that you're part of my life and that you're the shining light for truth and for justice for all of us. So thank you and a huge mazal tov on your award. Masha, that was extraordinary. <laughs> it's such a pleasure to listen to. <laughs> and I hope, I, I know for Brooke, it certainly was uh, very inspirational. Thank you so much for your warm words and support for this, the project and Brooke, and for being a sponsor of today's event and for collaborating with CAEF on various programs. Working together, we can all make a difference, and that is a key ingredient of the End Jew Hatred Movement. It is now my very special pleasure to introduce our first musical interlude, a song from Cantor Gideon Zellermeyer. Cantor Gideon Yechiel Zellermeyer is the Congregational Cantor at Congregation Shar HaShemayim in Montreal, which is also my family's shul. Gideon has a passion for illuminating the liturgy through a blend of traditional prayer modes and modern harmonic arrangements. Cantor Gideon is a graduate of the Tel Aviv Cantorial Institute, where he studied with Naftali Herstik, chief cantor of the Jerusalem Great Synagogue. He has performed around the world as a featured soloist. Cantor Gideon and the Shar Shemayim Synagogue Choir have toured North America and the United Kingdom, and their series of recordings have received widespread critical acclaim. Many will recognize his name as the featured soloist on Leonard Cohen's Grammy award-winning song, You Want It Darker. Cantor Gideon Zellermeyer. Rainu kulanu hasne haboer, Eleinu hakol mi shamayim diber. Otanu livu emuna vachalom, Sheyachad noshit yad achad la shalom, Vechol libeinu poem ke echad, Hador acharon hatikva lo tovah. Yachad namon kulanu bishvil echad, echad bishvil kulam, ad shene shane olam. Yachad namon, yachad namon, yachad namon, hallelujah. Tanu yavo upne kol haumot, yachad nafkia et kol hachomot, nakim azolam li haesh ve adam, olam hu adam, hu adam ne adam. Kulanu nagur levanim ushkorim, yashiru gvarim, yeladim ve horim. Yachad nivne olam shel tikva, olam meyuchar shediglo ahava. Yachad namod, kulanu bishvil echad, echad bishvil kulam, ad shene shane olam, yachad namod. Yachad namod, yachad namod, yachad namod, yachad namod. Kulanu bishvil echad, echad bishvil kulam, ad shene shane olam, yachad namod. Yachad namod, hallelujah. Yachad namod, hallelujah. That was amazing, <laughs> as always. Um, thank you so much, Cantor Zellermeyer. 
As a Montrealer, home to both the late Leonard Cohen and the very gifted Cantor Zellermeyer, I feel privileged to be part of this wonderful Jewish community. Now I'm very happy to introduce our next speaker, Karma Feinstein Cohen, founder and executive director of Magshimi Herut and World Herut, both NGOs that she describes as unapologetically Zionist. Herut is also a partner in NGU Hatred. Welcome, Karma. I have had the great privilege of working with Brooke Goldstein for the past three years in a world increasingly characterized by legal systems apathetic to the crimes committed by anti-Semites against the people of Israel, Brooke and her lawfare project have successfully challenged the status quo. From the Saudi Arabian government to Kuwait Airlines, Brooke's unapologetic approach to justice has inspired us all to stand up for what is right. One of her most inspiring initiatives to me was that when she stood up for the non-Israeli, non-Jewish victims of anti-Semitic terrorism, the Palestinian Arab children. These voiceless victims that are inundated with hatred and forced to become human shields and battering rams in the genocidal war against the Jewish state. These blatant acts of child abuse are given a free pass by the international community of jurists. Brooke and Children's Rights Institute did not give them a free pass. Blatant acts of discrimination, violence, and abuse against the Jewish people, Israeli citizens, and Palestinian children have exponentially expanded in the last year. Our work as Zionists, as caring and impassioned Jews, is cut out for us. The challenges are many and daunting, yet Brooke's successful campaigns in cases highlighting hypocrisy and hatred in our national and international institutions have proven that we can win. We must win. Mazel tov, Brooke. You deserve this. Thank you, Karma, and your team. Also, especially your fiery Canadian coordinator, Lauren Isaacs, who set the model here for what Zionist activism looks like and how to fight Jew hatred on campus. Our next speaker is coming to us from London, England, where his organization operates somewhat similarly to the Lawfare Project, educating people about anti-Semitism and fighting it in the courts and the court of public opinion. Jonathan Turner is chief executive of the UK Lawyers for Israel, which has collaborated with the Lawfare Project on a range of legal initiatives, including confronting charitable organizations that misuse their assets and status to disseminate political propaganda, denigrating Israel and promoting anti-Semitism. Jonathan Turner. It is an honor for me to offer this tribute to Brooke Goldstein. As well as an outstanding advocate for Israel and the Jewish people, Brooke is a visionary. She realized 12 or 13 years ago the need for civil society organizations to invoke the legal rights of Israel and the Jewish people. This area had long been neglected by supporters of Israel and infiltrated by hostile and destructive forces. Brooke not only appreciated the need to seize back this high ground, but set out to do so with great courage, skill and tenacity. Amongst many other things, she helped me and my colleagues get our sister organisation, UK Lawyers for Israel, off the ground, and we've worked together on many projects since then. Brooke provided significant assistance when we secured the arrest of the 2012 flotilla before it sailed to Gaza. She made a special journey to England to give a series of talks to students and others. We worked together to defeat the Palestinian attempt to get Israel suspended from FIFA. And we've worked together to oppose trumped up and one-sided charges against Israel in international tribunals. So I'm delighted that Brooke is receiving this award, recognizing the excellence of her advocacy on behalf of the Jewish people. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Tributes do keep pouring in and we won't have enough time today to hear from everyone who wanted to speak or send a message of congratulations, a thank you, a commendation to the Lawfare Project and Brooke. But before we hear any more accolades, please sit back and enjoy the wonderful, amazing songstress, songwriter and educator, the internationally acclaimed four-time nominee in the Independent Music Awards for her current release, Believe, and winner of the Global Music Awards Silver Medal for Outstanding Performance by a Female Vocalist. Please welcome, live from New York, 
Neshama Karlbach. Thank you so very much, all of you, my friends. It is a great honor and a privilege to be with you today to celebrate and acknowledge Brooke Goldstein and the Lawfare Project for their commitment to the Jewish people. So to have a moment of breath, I would love to begin with gratitude, a song of thanks and prayer. We say thank you to the universe that we are alive, that we are blessed to be here to fight just one more moment in this beautiful world for the sake of our children, for the sake of all of those who will come in the days ahead and for the sake of the generations that have come before us. Um, I'm not hearing you, but I'm hearing you. So I hope that you will join me and sing along. Thank you, thank you, Holy One.
it very much and again what an honor it is to be with you to celebrate today I'd like to offer just one more song before we get back to this incredible ceremony during the pandemic I had the gift of offering more than 400 virtual events from this from this little spot missing people more than I can possibly explain and maybe I don't need to this song was the song that kept me going. This is my, my Misha Berach, my prayer for healing. May we be blessed to hear each other's prayers. May we be known, may we be heard. Please hear our prayer and let us say, Amen. I feel that the world would be a different place and maybe you'll agree. If we could just scream Amen to each other's prayers without judgment, without, without any explanation at all. So I'd like to urge you all, if there's someone in the chat that you're thinking of right now, someone who's, someone who you just want us to think about, and I'm going to be watching the list as I sing, if you would like to, to offer a name, who needs love today? Who needs to remember that we are fighting on their behalf? Who needs to know that the world is changing because of people like Brooke and all of you? Who needs to know that there is hope? And let us say amen and let's all sing loud there's going to be a space for a nigun a song without words and there's going to be space for amends and i and no pressure obviously but we can change the wind friends if we only believe that our prayers are heard this is here our prayer may we be blessed May we be blessed, please hear our prayer. May we be known, may we be heard, please hear our prayer. Na 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 na
so much that was beautiful thank you sincerely for being with us today for gifting us with your song and your sentiment for always standing strong with the jewish people and for inspiring all of us uh, to be strong as well thank you thank you so it is now time for our award presentation program there is no finer gentleman no better scholar no more intense legal mind no better friend of the Jewish people than Dr. Jacques Gauthier. Born in Montreal and then educated in France for the first decade of his life, Dr. Gauthier earned a law degree by age 21. He studied international public law in Geneva, returning to Ontario and eventually to Toronto to a blooming career and activist life in the Franco-Canadian legal community. He never gave up on his desire to complete his PhD thesis a treatise on Jewish rights to Jerusalem. Dr. Gauthier did complete this 20 year, 1300 page project, and it stands to this day as the most important work in the long drive to establish the Jewish people's legal right to their homeland. Thus, from San Remo in 1920 to now, we have much to thank allies like Jacques for. Today, he will tell us why we have much to thank Brooke Goldstein and the Lawfare Project for in our common pursuit of justice for the Jewish people. Dr. Gauthier. Barbara, thank you for what you're doing today. And uh, Brooke, uh, I want to turn to Ben and to, uh, to Gerard, and I, I don't know, know you as well as I know Brooke, but um, I, I must tell you, Neshama, from now on, whenever I'm gonna make any kind of a presentation, I'm gonna ask that you sing before I speak. It is so uplifting. It's so beautiful. And uh, it's and ooh, the theme, you know, thank you, Holy One. I wanna thank the Holy One for his servant, Brooke, and for the lawfare team and for, for what they've been doing. When I was asked to, to make this presentation, I'm asked to do a lot of different things. And sometimes I say, well, I'll think about it. I'll deliberate. In three seconds, I said, yes, absolutely. I'll do this. It is such a privilege book, such an honor to do the presentation because you are one of a kind. And what you founded is so impactful, so special. I was gonna read this a little later, but I'll do it now again, because of the, the, the very special introduction through, through Neshama. It's a scripture from the Hebrew Bible. You'll find it in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 20. Justice, justice you shall pursue. Goes on to say, so that you may live and possess the land the eternal God has promised you. Well, that's what you've been doing, Brooke. You've been pursuing with passion, just noble causes. You should be about 80 years old, considering everything that you've been doing over the last years of your life. I won't be able to say at this juncture of my life that when I grow up, I wanna be just like you, however, you are an example. You're a source of inspiration for me and countless others. I'll say this, since uh, about a year ago, I was the recipient of this very, very special award. 
as a lawyer, you're familiar with the expression inter vivos. Well, this is a inter vivos transaction today. It's happening between living persons as opposed to post mortem. Often when there are accommodations and praise and recognition for one's work, there are living persons on one side and the other ones departed. You have no idea, Brooke, how encouraging it is for this to be happening in the midst of our pursuits. I know you, and I know that the impact of this was simply to be a catalyst for you. It will simply spur you on because the causes are so numerous. Of course, many of us are mindful that as you do this, you are a wife, you're a mother. I have four daughters and you have three little ones. You're juggling a lot. As you pursue these causes, you're also taking care of these precious lives. And that's where my admiration grows. Yeah, you have so many different things going on and yet what you're doing has been effective. It's made a difference. And that's why you deserve the commendations and that you deserve the praise. It's interesting as I look back over the last years, how often you and I, Brooke, have stood in different places, whether it was London or Jerusalem or Canada. And basically we were pursuing the same objectives. And uh, in our conversation we had just a few days ago, you acknowledge my own experience that at times it's, it's discouraging because uh, you know, you and I wish that uh, looking at the last years, you could say today, well, anti-Semitism is decreasing. It's a thing of the past. It's not. And um, all I can do is to say to you that it's not about what is accomplished in the short term. It's the nobility and the worthiness of everything that you do. I have difficulty thinking of others who combine your gifts. I meet a lot of very bright people because of what I do in life. I meet a lot of good writers. I meet a lot of good people. But people who have the knowledge and the brilliance and the gift, the ability to articulate basic arguments as you do, you're a media gladiator. I've marveled as I've watched you, whether it was Fox or CNN, and obviously often the atmosphere is not the most supportive, and yet you're able to just zero in on what counts. And you're able to convey truths, whether they're received or not, you articulate the truth. You present the narrative that must be presented to counter so many false narratives. So again, I say bravo. I say, well done, good and faithful servant of the Holy One. You're really doing well. And you have another 50 years ahead of you to continue to do, or more, uh, to continue to do this. So what I've been asked to do, my, the, the fun part, is to present to you this very special award and to present it to Lawfare from the Canadian Anti-Semitic Education Foundation. And because you might not be able to read it on the screen, it says uh, it's, uh, it's an award to Lawfare Project Brooke Goldstein for excellence in a advocacy, activism, and audacity in defending Jews, Israel, and Jewish rights across the globe. And this award, hopefully we can do this in such a way that you can see it, is absolutely beautiful. It's, it's got a number of flags on it and it's showing not only the Israeli flag, but is showing the flags of the nations who gathered in a turning point of history during the San Remo conference of April 1920. It was truly a turning point. 
Today's not the day that I try to convey again the importance of that conference, but you will notice that those flags are there in the flag of Israel. And these words belong to you. This is, you merit and deserve everything that is symbolized by this war. So I can't hand it over to you personally today. It will be coming to you shortly. But on behalf of all of us who are here today, those who've joined us in this very, very special occasion, on behalf of the Canadian Anti-Semitism Education Foundation, dear Brooke, please receive this award. Thank you. Barbara. Thank you so, so much, Dr. Gauthier. That was a beautiful tribute. Um, so we add our congratulations to Brooke, Team Lawfare Project, Team End Jew Hatred, and to you, Dr. Gauthier, for joining us today and making the presentation truly memorable. Thank you also for being the, the Zionist that you are and taking your message of truth to the world. Brooke, may you go from strength to strength. We await your next innovative idea and we will support you in it. This has been so moving and incredible. I have no words, but obviously I do. Um, I just want to thank so much the Canadian Anti-Semitism and Education Foundation for this really unexpected and incredible honor, which is not mine alone, which is the award that I am sharing with my staff at the Lawfare Project who are dedicated, who are out of the box thinkers, without whom none of the lawsuits that we filed uh, would happen. I share it with all of the donors who trusted us, um, who obviously invested in the civil rights initiative for the Jewish people. Without them, uh, none of the cases also could not be filed. I, I am so humbled and, and thankful to all of my friends and colleagues who spent the time to record messages and who are with us today. It, it is so amazing to be in the presence of so many warriors who are much better than I at what they do in their social justice advocacy, who I admire so much. I want to say that Dr. Gauthier is a pioneer in his field. Um, it is an incredible feeling to follow in his footsteps. He is a hero to the legal and the non-legal world. I myself did not know the significance of San Remo being an attorney, being a Zionist, being an advocate. I was ignorant um, until I met Dr. Gauthier and he has spent hours and hours uh, teaching me and I've been learning from him so much about the right to self sovereignty, not just in Jerusalem, but all of Israel, all of Judea, Samaria. Um, when I found out that uh, Barbara Kay, the esteemed journalist and, and truth warrior that I have been reading um, almost all of my adult life was going to be hosting this, I, I was really, really taken aback. And of course, that Masha uh, from Club Z would be present. What a, a beautiful, beautiful, touching uh, speech you gave. I have to say how much I admire you because you are the innovator in your field. You are the leader when it comes to Zionist education for our teens. Club Z is so important. It is unlike any other uh, student advocacy and education group that I know in the sense that Masha is offensive. She is not defensive. She is teaching her students how to offensively advocate for their rights, for equal protection, and she is not afraid to be front and center and to uh, teach her students how to confront Jew haters and anti-Semites and how to do it effectively. And we are also so blessed to partner with Club Z, to partner with CAEF um, and many other organizations in the End Jew Hatred movement. Um, Nishama, I also want to say that your uh, singing is so moving and, and what an uplifting experience. And, and I also obviously want to give thanks to my husband, 
who without which I could not do what I do today, who shares with me 50-50, although he might argue 70-30, the raising and taking care of our children. I am so dependent and grateful to him. And finally, to my mom and dad, Uh, Ellen and Norman Goldstein, who uh, insisted on giving me a Zionist education, a Jewish education, who are my titanium net and who have enabled me and given me the confidence and courage to take the types of risks that you need to take uh, when navigating this very, very challenging world of dealing against uh, and and combating anti-Semitism and coming up with the legal theories necessary. Um, I also want to say that um, Andrea Spindle and Anita Bromberg and David Stamler have put in so much time and effort to this, um, have been such huge supporters of the Lawfare Project and the End Jew Hatred movement. They are really one of the most active chapters uh, of the NGO hatred movement in Canada. In fact, last summer, they held a massive event that had prominent speakers uh, that blew the shofar and was in solidarity with the Jewish community of Berlin, who had a 400 person protest uh, against anti-Semitism and Jew hatred in Germany, which is unfortunately rising. And after that protest happened, and because of the support of groups like CAEF that rallied around the world, the uh, German uh, parliamentary debate included a question about ending Jew hatred. And that was because of their initiative. They've also sent mezuzahs to every senator in Canada, in the Canadian parliament, along with a letter urging them to combat Jew hatred. And we often get reports from CAEF uh, that engage the community that are reporting on what is happening, the violations against our community, but also besides monitoring what's happening, um, they are actively reaching out to administrators on campus and to authorities and fighting against Jew hatred. And if I missed anyone um, who is giving a tribute today, uh, please forgive me. Um, Obviously, I want to say thank you also to everybody who has joined us on Zoom because I think that the, the unity and the gathering that we have today is uh, really significant because it shows that we all understand the issues at hand right now. And we all understand, as I believe Jacques said as well, that we are living in a pivotal time um, because what we are facing now is the rise of systemic Jew hatred. Jew hatred is now out in the open. It's out on the street with Jews being beaten up, being killed uh, on campus, on the street, just for identifying as Jewish, just for going to synagogue and praying. We see Jew hatred now in the government. Um, We are seeing institutionalized racism in the Biden administration with his appointments of people who support the unlawful and discriminatory so-called BDS movement, which advocates and carries out unlawful commercial boycotts against people because of their ethnicity, because of their national origin, because of their, their religion. That is racism. And that's what we are seeing the US administration support. We're also reading right now about a million dollar grant that the US State Department is awarding to NGOs solely for the purpose of engaging in lawfare attacks against the Jewish state to delegitimize the right of the Jewish people to live in Israel, to live in Judea Samaria, to appropriate our identity as indigenous to Judea. I mean, if, if Jews didn't come from Judea, I don't know where we're from. We're seeing it in academia, where it is out in the open. 
where anti-Semitism is being funded by hostile foreign states like Qatar to the tunes of hundreds of millions of dollars. We're seeing, for example, pogroms happen in Israel. We're seeing the lynching of Jews in Israel. I recently made Aliyah and I'm living in Israel right now. And I never realized until I live here, the extent of violence that is taking place against Jewish people every day. And you do not hear about it in the West. Obviously you're not hearing about it from the mainstream media, but even when you're subscribing to the email list of great organizations like the ZOA or the Conference of Presidents or Federation, what have you, you are just still not understanding what is happening. There were Jews just last week who went fishing in Akko who were lynched. There were three young fathers who were axed to death, leaving nine children to live without a father. This is pure, pure Jew hatred. And of course, we're seeing it in Canada and we're seeing it very, very much on the Canadian media. And you just have to look at how the recent events of, of the killing of an Islamist supporting journalist who is embedded with terrorist groups who were firing indiscriminately, how the Canadian media leaped to unfounded conclusions and accused members of the army of the military of the Jewish state of murder. This is nothing but modern day blood libels. And this is why I feel so blessed and so encouraged to work with my colleagues at the Lawfare Project because what we are doing is not defensive. What we are engaging in is impact litigation. In fact, these are strategies that we didn't invent. These are strategies that have been used by minority communities in the West, in the United States and Canada for over 15, 20, almost 30 years. If you think about it, you know, all of the civil and human rights that we enjoy uh, in America, especially are products of impact litigation products of, of seminal civil rights cases brought on behalf of minority communities. If you look at Brown v. Board of Education, desegregation in schools, Roe v. Wade, right of a woman uh, to, to her body, right of, of a woman to choose. And yet, you know, when I was working about uh, 15 years ago um, at uh, Daniel Pipe's Middle East Forum, I was uh, defending uh, counterterrorism personnel and moderate Muslims who were sued for speaking out against radical Islam. And, and I did a deep dive when I was at the Middle East Forum. And I also want to say a big thank you to Daniel Pipes, who really launched my career and taught me everything I know about political Islam or Islamism and the need to go on the offensive. And we were representing people like Gerd Wilders, the Dutch politician who was brave enough to call out Islamism and who worked with Ayan Hirsi Ali uh, on her film Submission and who was then sued by a, a radical imam for the crime of reporting and speaking out against, against this imam. He was sued for defamation. We represented him and we represented people like Hassan Dal Aslam, who was a, a Iranian uh, American. He fled Iran, left his family in Iran to come to the United States where he thought he could exercise his first amendment right to free speech. And he was blogging and writing about the National Iranian American Council or NIAC, uh, whose head, Trita Parsi, you'll often see on CNN, defending the Iran deal and, and lobbying for the Iranian government. He was sued by Nayak in a lawfare lawsuit to intimidate him into silence so that we wouldn't be aware of these types of national security threats. And we were doing a deep dive into all of the funding, the millions and millions of dollars going in towards pro-Islamist, anti-free speech, anti-Jewish, anti-Israel litigation. We were looking at groups like the Muslim Legal Fund, the Council on American Islamic Relations, Palestine Legal, and it occurred to me, we did not have a Jewish civil rights litigation fund. 
It did not exist. And, and to me, it was unbelievable because if you think about all of the philanthropy of the Jewish community and the importance of impact litigation and the amount of attorneys that we have in our community, the fact that we had not organized any type of strategic legal offense obviously was a shame. And it was at that point in 2010 that I had at the invitation of, of David Ifune, who of the Algaminer to attend an event where Malcolm Holine was being honored and was speaking, um, that I was lucky enough after the event to introduce myself to Mr. Holine. And I said to him, you know, if you know of a Jewish civil rights litigation fund, uh, please let me know, I'd like to work for them. And he said to me, there, there is none, you start it. And so I'm so grateful to Malcolm Holine, uh, the past chair of the Conference of Presidents, who we also heard from, who gave me an office uh, 10, almost over 10 years ago uh, in the Conference of Presidents and who encouraged me and gave me the strength um, and, and imparted upon me his wisdom to launch what is the Lawfare Project. And four and a half years ago, or Ben would probably correct me, I think it's about five years ago, we started our impact litigation because we believe that through the courts and through the legal system is how we are going to gain equal protection like other minority communities have. And, and it's about time that we do so. Ben Ryber, who I've worked with now for almost 12 years is responsible for bringing one of the most significant cases against BDS. He, to my knowledge, he brought the only lawsuit against BDS, and it was in New York, and it was against the National Lawyers Guild, the largest lawyers guild in America with thousands and thousands of members and dozens of chapters all over the United States. The Lawyers Guild instituted a BDS resolution and our client, um, attempted to do business, I'll, I'll spare the details of the story, but basically tried to buy an ad in the National Lawyers Guild annual journal uh, for their own uh, award dinner. And he was denied and they were really stupid enough to send an email saying, here's your money back. We don't do business with Israelis. And they put in writing evidence of their unlawful discriminatory actions we sued them and Benjamin was able to settle with the National Lawyers Guild. He completely rewrote their anti-discrimination policy. We forced them to do business with an Israeli, thereby breaking uh, BDS. And we also forced them to send an email and a note and a new policy to all of the chapters of the National Lawyers Guild saying that they are no longer allowed uh, to engage in BDS. If they do, that they will lose the right to be an NLG chapter. Um, I'm also so, so grateful to Zipporah Reich, who I think, I'm not quite sure, but I think we might hear from her a little bit later. I've been kept a little bit in the dark, a whole lot, I, I would say, in the dark about this program. She has been with us for three years. And she is a litigator with over 20 years experience. We are very blessed and lucky to have her keeping track of the settlement agreement and enforcement of the settlement agreement at San Francisco State University, uh, which was also incredibly significant because in that case, uh, Jewish students who were members of Hillel were denied the right to table at the Know Your Rights Fair where all of the students were invited except for Hillel to advertise their student clubs. And when they, Hillel tried to apply, they asked Hillel questions of whether or not they supported the occupation and what their stances are on Israel. And we sued the school for that and for other discriminatory actions. And what was incredible to me is that the school did not deny that it did not allow Hillel to table. Rather, their defense was, we did not include Hillel, not just not because they're Jewish, but because they're Zionists. And Zionism is a political point of view, and therefore it's not illegal 
discrimination under the California uh, law, which prohibits discrimination based on categories like race, ethnicity, national origin, sexual orientation, et cetera, not political views. Political views you can discriminate against. And in the settlement agreement that we were able to reach with the California State University system, because that, that's the umbrella uh, uh, entity. So, so the agreement applies to all of the uh, universities under the California State University system. We achieved uh, the recognition that according to CSU's official policy now, because of the settlement agreement, that quote, Zionism is an integral part of the Jewish identity. And this is so important because it recognized that anti-Zionist discrimination is anti-Semitism, is a civil rights violation. You know, too often we have students on college campuses who are being beaten up, they're being spat on, they're being excluded, they're being targeted, they're being otherwise discriminated against, with foreign politics being used as an excuse, like that's some sort of affirmative defense of discrimination. If you went to a Chinese student and said, hey, I don't like the policy of the Chinese government and what they did with COVID, Therefore, I'm going to discriminate against you because you're Chinese, that's racist. If you decide to exclude a Muslim student group from participating at the university because you are angry about Iran Iranian nuclear armament and you project your disappointment of a foreign state on someone because of where they're born, because of their religion, because of their ethnicity, that's racism. That's bigotry 101, and it's recognized as such by everyone. But when it comes to similar targeting against Jewish people because of their identity, their religious identity, because of where they're born, because they're Israeli, this is not recognized as racist. And that's why the settlement group was so important. And the other point I want to make in terms of SFSU is that only the Jewish students are given a political litmus test, even if Zionism was just a political point of view. Only Jews are given the political litmus test before they're allowed to participate. Chinese students aren't asked what their you know, vision of the Chinese government is. You don't go to Black students and ask them what they think about the government in Sudan. Only Jewish students are targeted that way, and that's a double form of discrimination right there. And I also want to give a special thanks to Gerard Felitti, whose work at the Lawfare Project is so important. His background is in counterterrorism litigation. And um, he not only uh, has been working on a project to expose the root cause of the rise of Jew hatred on college campuses, which we believe believe is the foreign funding coming from states like Qatar that I mentioned earlier, but he's coming up with creative legal solutions about how to solve it. And second, he also is representing Matt Greenman, who is a, a Jewish activist who is severely beaten up at a pro-Islamist or pro-Palestinian rally in New York just this past April 20th. And he is working to ensure that the uh, uh, assailants, the people who did this will be prosecuted as a hate crime because there was a general reluctance by law enforcement to prosecute anti-Jewish crimes as hate crimes. And he's also working on, on a uh, way to enforce through civil litigation that there will be uh, uh, penalties to, for the people who incited the violence that happened at the rally. Um, but most significantly, I'm, I'm so proud of the work that we're doing at the with the End Jew Hatred movement. Um, now, I just want to say a little bit of a background. Andrew, just tell me how, how much time do I have? Two, three minutes? Just show me, show me by hand. Two minutes. Okay. So I, I would just like to go um, and take this time because it's so important to explain the philosophy behind the movement. Because I really hope that if, 
you get anything from today's event, it would be the desire to go home and join the only Jewish civil rights movement of our time. Now, if you think about it, there has never been a Jewish civil rights movement in the West. We have had a movement for Zionism, which is a movement for self-sovereignty in our homeland. We had the Soviet Jewry movement, which again advocated for the rights of Jews happening somewhere else, happening in the Soviet Union. And we've had Jews march for Black Lives Matter, Jew march for LGBTQIA plus rights, Jews march for women's rights, but we've never seen a Jews for Jews movement that centers their advocacy around civil rights, Jewish advocacy. We have so many pro-Israel organizations, organizations that define Jewish advocacy as, as arguing for a foreign country or making people like and have an affinity for Israel. And that is beautiful and wonderful. But right now with the rise of 21st century minority rights movements, we need and we now have a movement that advocates for the Jewish community as a minority community in the West deserved of equal protection, subjected to systemic racism, subjected to cultural appropriation and so forth. And so that is why the end Jew hatred movement is so important. And I'll, I'll end with just the four points that we learned. Um, two years ago, I had just given birth to my third child. And um, it was at the time when Black Lives Matter was rioting uh, in Brooklyn. Uh, they were having cop cars being lit on fire just three blocks away from where I lived. And yet at the same time, my Jewish friends we're posting on social media in support of Black Lives Matter. And these same Jewish friends that were doing so were refusing or not posting about Jewish issues, even though hate crimes against Jews were rising. And I thought to myself, what is this cognitive dissonance? dissonance? Why is it that our advocacy has not been able to capture the hearts and the minds of our own community, much less everyone else, so that they will feel empowered and feel good about advocating for Jewish civil rights. So we did a deep dive into Black Lives Matter, the New Women's Movement, and the End Asian Hate Movement, and the um, uh, Gay Rights Movement as well. We studied their tactics, their strategies, their messaging, their organization, how they're funding. And we learned four lessons. And these are the four lessons that I would love for everyone to take away today. When you think of these movements like Black Lives Matter, for example, the mission is in the name. Black Lives Matter. If you are against Black Lives Mattering, you are a racist. No matter the crimes that are happening, no matter the financial scandals and the theft that is happening, you must support Black Lives Matter or you are a bigot. We define ourselves as pro-Israel. And when we do this, we set up a binary. If I'm pro-Israel, I recognize there must also be anti-Israel. And if I'm objective and I want to learn about this, I need to hear both sides and come out somewhere in the middle. And when we teach our students to engage in pro-Israel ad advocacy, that's not feel good advocacy. When I show my support for the women's movement, I go to a march and I wear a funny looking hat. When I show my support to Black Lives Matter, I do a hashtag and I black out the screen and that's it. But for pro-Israel advocacy, you have to have a law degree and be 10 times smarter than me and Jacques Gauthier combined in order to win an argument, um, a legal argument. You have to memorize UN resolution this and that. And we talk about what's happening abroad. It's not about feelings, it's about facts. And you have to engage in a defensive debate. The second thing we learned is that their language is one, and I, I spoke about this before, of civil rights, systemic racism, appropriation, apartheid, and so forth, where we're talking about legal issues. The third thing we learned is what they're or the way that they're organized is bottom up. The way we are organized is top down. They're engaged in grassroots advocacy, going into communities and rising up leaders. You know, if there is a, a black 
person who is discriminated against in Queens, the next day, the NAACP, the Council on American Islamic Relations, you know, Farrah Khan are all going to gather behind that unknown person and advocate for him. But good luck if you are a no name Jew and you have been discriminated against getting the heads of all the major Jewish organizations behind you and all saying something uh, together in unity um, because they have bureaucracies, they have donors they have to answer to, they, they want to claim that it's their initiative, they feel that they're in competition with each other, they're operating in silos. We've set up a system that works against us because again, we feel that we're in competition with each other, which is why it's so amazing to work in the Jewish litigation field, the civil rights field, because attorneys are not in competition. I work so nicely with Jaco and we work with UK Lawyers for Israel because we're all in this together and we know there's no shortage of lawsuits that we're going to file. And the precedent that I set or they set, we all benefit each other's clients and we can work together. So it's so refreshing. And the fourth, I think most important lesson that we learned from this study is that these minority rights movements ensure real consequences for bad behavior. If you look at the new women's movement, they pick a target, they pick someone like Harvey Weinstein, who's engaged in very, very uh, uh, bad activities. They zero in on him and they take that target down. Now, I can't even remember who the anti-Semite of the week was last week. Every day I get three or four emails about BDS on this campus or Roger Waters or, or this anti-Semitic incident happening. And unfortunately we live in a target rich environment where our advocacy is defined as responding to them. So if we are unified and most importantly as well, if we are non-partisan and non-political because the Jewish community has been used as a political football. I'll give you one example of how partisanship hurts us. When Trump declared uh, in his executive order something monumental that Title VI of the Civil Rights Act applies to Jewish students on campus, the Jewish community was not able to unify and get behind Trump's executive order, because half of the Jewish community did not support the Trump administration. Now I'll tell you, whether it's Obama or Clinton or Trump, if one of those or any president not only includes Jews in, uh, as protected by Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, but declares historically Jerusalem as the capital of our homeland, I would be the first to thank them, regardless of whether or not I voted for them. But it's the fact that we were not able to unify because of our partisan divide, that we were weakened. And that does not serve us. So with that, I want to conclude by saying that the time is now for a Jewish civil rights movement that's non-political, that's non-partisan, that unifies us under one umbrella. So I'm so grateful to CAF and to Club Z and all of the organizations that have joined the NGH movement, but I call on every single one of you now today, also please join the movement, start a chapter, we are here to support you. We will give you pro bono legal services. We will give you strategic support. And of course, we will give you financial support to engage in direct actions, protest, any type of action that gets you out on the street, fighting against and ensuring consequences for Jew hatred. Thank you so much. Brooke, <laughs> that was so inspiring. Um, that was a magnificent uh, address. And I've been making notes because you made so many wonderful points. Um, uh, I have to find out more about the project in detail. I've, I've, been, I've been admiring you from relatively afar for, for a long time for what you do, but I have never really um, I've never gotten into the weeds on what you do, and I, you've inspired me. I want to know more. I want to find out more, and especially about the End Jew Hatred Project. And you make so many good points about other minority civil rights movements uh, that you are so spot on. 
um, in that analysis and uh, the clarity is amazing. Okay, so now it's time to say congratulations, Brooke, <laughs> Team Lawfare Project, Team Inju Hatred, and to you, Jacques Gauthier, for your wonderful words and, and your memorable presentation. So we had many people uh, contributing messages and we'll present them as one recorded message. Uh, listen and watch as each person's name and organization appears with their message. Um, and thank you all so much for the honor of uh, allowing me to be MC here. Um, and I'm just uh, very grateful to have finally met Brooke, not in the flesh, but um, in this in this second best way. Uh, it's a great honor for me. Um, okay, uh, we're not quite finished. We're going to see the speakers on the screen and then I'll speak again. There is no question that the Jewish people and the state of Israel are under assault right now, from the left, from the right, in the media, the internet, and especially on college campuses. Sadly, hatred against the Jewish people is part of our long history. But the reason we have endured and even prospered against all odds is because there are people who rise up from within to defend our people with strength, with wisdom, with great courage. One of these people is Brooke Goldstein. I remember when I first met Brooke, I thought to myself, who is this wonderful person? Where does she get this energy? And what made her care about our people so much? I was equally impressed with Brooke's vision for the Lawfare Project. And I've been one of his longtime supporters. Through the work of Lawfare, who helped stop this upsurge in the hatred of Jews. Let's not call it anti-Semitism anymore. It's Jew hatred. We are so fortunate to have Brooke leading the charge against our enemies on the legal front. She is a marvelous spokesperson on television and the internet. She's a brilliant writer. I have always read her op-eds when I see her byline. And of course, she is a very smart lawyer. Brooke, I congratulate you on this great honor. I am so glad that we have you on our side. I wish you many more successful years leading our fight. God bless you. Shalom, everyone. My name is Daniel Corrin, and I'm the Executive Director of Hasbara Fellowships Canada. On behalf of our Hasbara Fellows and high school interns, I would like to wish a heartfelt mazel tov to Brooke Goldstein for winning the Advocate Award of Excellence presented by the Canadian Anti-Semitism Education Foundation, a dear friend of ours here at Hasbara. Uh, Brooke is a fearless and tireless leader in our community and has done a phenomenal job standing up for Israel and the Jewish people. She has supported and offered legal advice to our fellows on several occasions, and our community should be so grateful to have her as an advocate and as a spokesperson. Her organization, The Lawfare Project, has been incredibly effective in combating anti-Israel and anti-Semitic lawfare here in Canada and in the States. I would also like to thank CAEF and Andrea Spindel for the incredible work they do on behalf of our Jewish community. May you go from strength to strength. Hi, I'm Ellie Kohanim, and I want to congratulate my good friend, Brooke Goldstein, on this incredibly well-deserved recognition. There's really no one I can think of who has been at the forefront of the fight against Jew hatred, fighting for the rights of the Jewish people around the world and for the Jewish state of Israel than Brooke Goldstein. There's truly no one I can think of who's a better advocate. And so what a well-deserved recognition for Brooke, as well for the Canadian Anti-Semitism Education Foundation. Congratulations to you all. Hello, Brooke. Hello, everyone else watching this. This is Micha Danzig from Herut's National Board. And I want to congratulate Brooke Goldstein and the Lawfare Project on this well-deserved award. As a proud partner of Brooke and the Lawfare Project and the Andrew Hatred Movement, I can think of no one more deserving of this award. Because whether it's in Spain, New York, or San Francisco, Brooke and the Lawfare Project never shy away from a fight to defend the Jewish people against anti-Semitism. They also don't buy into the mendacious claim that Jews ever deserve to have a litmus test for where they stand on Israel or on Zionism in order to belong to any group or to join in any forum. Brooke and Lawfare Project, most importantly, 
consistently stand for the idea and fight for the idea that we should strive to end Jew hatred in our lifetime. For all those reasons and many, many more that cannot be enumerated in 60 seconds, this is a well-deserved award. Congratulations. Hello, I'm Zipporah Reich, the Director of Litigation at the Lawfare Project, and I'm honored to have the opportunity to say a few words about Brooke Goldstein, who has taught me everything I know about how to fight for the civil rights of Jewish people. I want to start by saying that Brooke is a visionary with an uncanny ability to turn big dreams into reality. When Brooke started the Lawfare Project, she set out to build a network of legal professionals that would provide pro bono assistance to those who came to our doors for help. Today, that network consists of over 400 attorneys. Brooke also had a vision of starting a grassroots movement dedicated to ending Jew hatred. Today, that movement is a powerful force for change that operates across the globe. Brooke is the personification of grit and determination. Through working with her, I've learned how to push past obstacles and how to summon the courage to defy those who seek to block my path. I've learned that staying quiet in the face of Jewish discrimination is not an option and that speaking out boldly and loudly is the only path forward. But perhaps the most important thing I've learned from Brooke is that right action can truly change the world. Over the past three years, I have walked the path of Jewish justice that Brooke forged for me. I am forever grateful to have that opportunity and look forward to doing this important work for many years to come. Hi, I'm Cheryl Durchinsky. Thank you, it's an honor to be here. Um, thank you CAEF for having Brooke as your honoree. I couldn't think of anyone who is more intelligent, strong, and passionate of a leader. When Brooke puts her mind to something, you could be sure it gets done. She definitely um, is incredibly motivating. And who else could create a civil rights movement for the Jewish people? The end Jew hatred movement will unite all of us and bring us together. I'm grateful she had the vision to start. And I know that there's only more great things to come. So thank you, Brooke, for all you do for our community. And again, thanks to all of you for tuning in and honoring her. Shalom, everyone. This is Joshua Washington of the Institute for Black Solidarity with Israel. And I want to give a huge, huge shout out to Brooke Goldstein. Brooke and I have worked together countless times before. Um, I have never had the privilege of meeting her face to face, not yet anyway. Um, so I liken our relationship to like a Charlie's Angels type of thing where she's just a voice on the phone um, telling me what to do. Um, but I do appreciate that about her, that she is not a stranger to execution. Brooke is willing to get things done. Um, one of the things I admire about her the most is both her ability to stay focused on the task at hand. Um, I can I, I lost count how many times uh, Brooke has brought our attention back to what needs to be done. Okay, guys, what do we do about this? Where do we go with this? But how do we fight this? Um, but also her ability to listen. So she has a strength and she has an openness. The strength that allows her to push forward and to lead people and an openness that allows her to hear um, either uh, whether it's uh, disagreements, uh, criticism, suggestions, um, and, and change course based on that. Brooke is very strong but she still is flexible and those are the two things that make a very effective very powerful leader so brooke you are very much deserving of this award congratulations very happy for you and i hope you continue to stay strong and consistent in all that you do and may god's hand continue to be on you uh, as you move forward and as you do the work that is so desperately needed so thank you so much it is a sincere pleasure on behalf of everyone at caef to take this opportunity to recognize the extraordinary work and contributions of the Lawfare Project, its founder, Burke Goldstein, and of course, their amazing staff and host of volunteers. Advocacy, activism, and audacity, as the award reads, sums up the work of the Lawfare Project so well. 
Let's take a moment to reflect on how much the Lawfare Project has in common with our outgoing award winner, Dr. Jacques Gauthier. Both were trailblazers speaking out when too many refused to listen. Both through persistence, insight, and just a touch of chutzpah, furthered the crucial conversation around Jew hatred in the face of huge obstacles. And both used truth and the law as their weapons of choice to further our understanding of Jewish Indigenous rights. By establishing a network of legal professionals willing and able to contribute their expertise to defend the civil and human rights of the Jewish people, the Lawfare Project deserves to be recognized as leading advocates. By introducing and empowering the end Jew hatred movement to demand Jewish civil rights and justice for Jews, the Lawfare Project has brought a new and crucial focus to the ongoing battle. So I take this opportunity to thank you, Yashir Koach. May you go from strength to strength. Hello, everybody. My name is Phyllis Schmaus. I am a trustee of the Holocaust Museum and Center for Tolerance and Education. And my name is Andrea Meyer Winograd. I'm the executive director of the Holocaust Museum and Center for Tolerance and Education. Today, we wanna to thank you, Brooke, for the opportunity to collaborate with NJU Hatred, the global grassroots movement that not only seeks but demands for the violation of Jewish civil rights to be unacceptable in contemporary society. What a challenge it is to convey, Brooke, your outstanding virtues all in one minute's time. You represent a beacon of hope with an unrelenting commitment to the intolerance for Jew hatred. As a truth seeker, you shine the light not just on Hanukkah, but year round on standing up for justice for the Jewish people by educating the public on many forms in which Jew hatred presents itself today. You're a leader that exemplifies Jewish empowerment and pride. It is for those reasons and many, many more that we applaud you today for receiving a much deserved recognition for the Advocate Award of excellence. Congratulations. Congratulations. Shalom everyone, my name is Rudy Rockman. I'm a Jewish and Israel rights activist. I wanted to wish a big, big, big mazal tov to a dear and personal friend of mine, Brooke Goldstein for winning the Advocates Award. You know, you're not just a good advocate. You're not just speaking well about Israel. You're also an amazing activist because you're making the steps and taking actions in order to ensure the future of the Jewish people. You're making the actions in order for us to move forward and to dictate what our future looks like and not just to react to what the world wants to impose onto us. So I wanna say personally that throughout my own growth at Columbia University dealing with anti-Semitism, that you were always there for the many difficulties that I went through, but not only me, but to many other peers amongst the youth of how you helped empower us, give us this, the tools, skills, resources, and to give us a back when we had no one else there for us in times of need. So, mamash kol on all the work that you do. And I know you're going to win many more awards because you're going to do so much more work for the Jewish people. So, kol mazal tov, and batzlacha for everything to come. Hi, everyone. I want to start by thanking my friends at the Canadian Anti-Semitism Education Foundation, not just for the work that you do, but also for your ego-free, always willing to learn to help and cooperate way of working, which is truly, truly remarkable. These values, of course, fit perfectly with this event, which is all about paying a tribute to the work of colleagues. So Brooke, congratulations to you. We've known each other for quite a few years now, and I am very, very happy I was asked to take part in this event. Brooke is definitely one of the most passionate people I know, working tirelessly with endless energy and determination. So I wanna say Lechaim to your success, to the fulfillment of your goals for a better and safer future for Israel, for the Jewish people, and for peace-seeking people everywhere. Um, mazal tov. So for years, I would see this woman on television promoting the cause of Israel and the Jewish people. 
And I would say to myself, who is this woman? She'd be on Fox and she'd be dealing with all the issues and the attacks against Israel and she would defend Israel better than anybody else I was seeing on television. And I always said to myself, I really would love to meet this woman one day. So it turns out, one day she's in LA and I get a call from a friend and says, do you want to meet Brooke Goldstein? I said, yeah, I'd love to meet Brooke Goldstein. So we met and over the years we struck up a great relationship and every time I would meet her, whether it was in New York or LA, she always had another baby. And, and the more babies she had, the better she was. She would always start these great initiatives and I would see her on TV and she just got better and better with the years. And then one day she decides to move to Israel with all the babies and her great family. And that's, she did one thing that I'll never forget. Out of Israel, in the middle of COVID, she organized a demonstration in Los Angeles. And she got a few hundred people to show up. That's good. Brooke, I'm so proud of you. Congratulations. When I moved to New York City in 2016, I didn't know Seoul, but I was already very immersed with the Jewish communities and fought my way against the delegitimization of Israel. I was hungry to get to know the thought leaders in this niche and I wanted to grow and learn. This is how I stumbled upon a video on YouTube where Brooke gave a speech on how Hamas uses kids for terrorism. I watched it five times in a row and I knew I wanted to work with her. I wanted to help amplify her message and I also wanted to learn from her. This is how I ended up working with the Loafer Project four months later. If I hadn't been trained as a ballet dancer, I probably would have been a lawyer. Even though all lawyers always say I would have regretted it. But seeing the incredible impact, the turn is that the Loafer Project achieve every day. I kind of regret not being a lawyer. Brooke's vision for such an entity was absolutely groundbreaking. And it's no secret how she had built Loafer Project up, but most people didn't really understand why it was so needed. Such a group of lawyers whose work is providing help pro bono to help the Jewish communities whose basic human rights have been harmed is inevitable. And unfortunately, in 2022, it's even more important than ever. Therefore, this event today and the desire to honor Brooke's tireless work and her unusual talent for thinking outside of the box is almost long overdue. And when I say that she's tireless, I do mean it. As the mother of three, she's still going to pick up the phone even at midnight, making sure that our goal will materialize on the highest quality. And as a woman, I will also interject something here. Women who empower women are the types you want to work with. Therefore, my dream five years ago has been fulfilled and sharing these thoughts with you while honoring Brooke and the work of hers and the work of the Loafer Project is a pure privilege to me. Our fight is far from over and definitely far from being easy. But as long as we have such fierce fighters as Brooke and her team, I really believe that change is possible. Congratulations. Congratulations to Brooke Goldstein on this well-deserved honor. You do tremendous work for the Jewish community all around the world, whether it's with the Lawfare Project or, or all the other activism that you do. Thank you on behalf of the Jewish people. You're a dedicated person. Your passion is inspiring. Thank you again. Brooke Goldstein, congrats for the Advocate Award of Excellence that you're getting. It's so exciting. I'm so excited for you, my good friend. And I'm so proud of what you do for the Israeli and the Jewish people. Wherever they are, you're doing a sacred job. And Brooke, just continue and do what you do because it's so important for all of us. Thank you again, your friend, Avi Sakharov. Go Fauda! My dear friends, peace be upon you all. I wish I could join you today, but when you'll be watching this, I'll be up in the sky traveling. I wanna firstly begin by thanking the organizers of the event. Secondly, I want to specially acknowledge the Lawfare Project. Brooke Goldstein and her team of brave, amazing people, fighters, lawyers, amazing human beings. They are the ones that I look up to. Brooke has become my hero and it's not easy to become my hero, but she made it. The Lawfare Project is the missing piece within society. We are nothing as humans without laws. Without laws, we can't have a civilization. It's the Lawfare Project 
that actually holds people accountable and makes sure that laws are respected and that people are not discriminated against. When I was targeted by a Islamist lawyer in Australia who wanted ISIS to behead me, the Lawfare Project was the only organization that stood by me then and has continued to stand by me ever since. I can't thank them enough. I believe that the Lawfare Project represents people of all backgrounds. It is a necessity and which is why people of all backgrounds should be siding and supporting the Lawfare Project and doing everything we can to uplift this organization and to always appreciate Brooke Goldstein. Why? Because the extremist Islamists do not believe in the law. They don't believe in common law. They don't believe in civil law. They believe in the violent aspects of Sharia law. But they use common law and they use civil law to bring innocent people down, to cripple them, to silence them. It is the Lawfare Project that works on uplifting people who work in noble fields and noble causes. It is my absolute honor to be a friend of the, of the Lawfare Project, as well as Brooke Goldstein, my sister Brooke. May God bless you and bless everyone in your event. And I hope to see you very soon. Shalom and peace be upon you. God bless. Well, <laughs> thank you everybody that spoke. And I'm sure Brooke is pretty overwhelmed with um, all these accolades and the love, the true love that really emanates from these messages. Um, it's been a very inspiring, I know it's been a long program, but very inspiring. Um, and so many wonderful people, uh, dedicated people to this cause. Uh, it's been a privilege to be present. And um, we have heard how the Lawfare Project has impacted the social, educational, and legal sectors, bringing together Jews and non-Jews in a righteous cause. This program is a celebration of Jewish heritage, a tribute to our heroes, and a call to action from CAEF and our partners and sponsors. Please find out more about what you can do. Join the Jewish civil rights movement and Jew hatred. Special thanks to Cantor Zellermeyer, Rabbi Cutler, Consul General Shamir, Dr. Gauthier, all of our guest speakers and contributors to our many sponsors. Mazel tov, congratulations to the Lawfare Project and Brooke Goldstein. May you all have a wonderful evening, a happy and healthy summer. Tune in again for CAEF webinars. To life, to Israel, to peace among all peoples, to our collective fight for justice, shalom, and Andrea, I'll turn it over to you for a final thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barbara. I just wanted to take a moment. I know it's been a long program. I appreciate everybody that's hung in. I wanted to thank you, Barbara, for being a wonderful MC and yourself a very dedicated community activist. You really are that. And thank you to everybody that brought their sponsorship to um, the program and everyone that spoke and to you, Brooke, for being the leader that you are. And I just wanted to end by telling you that in a few days, maybe a week, you'll see the launch of the new End Jew Hatred Canada website. And uh, we'll invite everybody to join us and uh, become an activist. Anytime you want information, please be in touch. Andrea, A-N-D-R-I-A, -A, at C-A-E-F dot C-A. And farewell to everybody for now. Take care, be well. Thank you.